Hello, Clifton Park and Half Moon Library. My name <coughs> is Sam Sam the Ma <coughs> Magic. <coughs> All right, let's, let's start this over. Hello, Clifton Park Half Moon Library. My name is Sam, <coughs> Sam, Sam the ma Magic Man. I am. <coughs> oh, come on. What? 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 Hello, Clifton Park Half Moon Library. My name is Sam Sam the Magic Man. I'm super excited to be able to share some magic with you all today. Now, I wish I could be there with you in person. You're a beautiful library. It'd be great to see all of you, but I'm still very grateful for opportunity to share some magic with you now. I'll show a few of my favorite magic tricks right here from home. We'll talk a little bit about magic and I'll even teach you a couple of magic tricks myself so you can go off and do them for your friends and family as well. Now I like to always start off my magic shows by showing my audiences where it is that I learned my magic tricks and the true story is I learned all of my secrets from different magic books. And because I'm in my own house right now, actually, I have a couple of these books that I brought out to share with you today. Now, the one that I use the most, it's the oldest magic book I have, had it for years. It's The Coloring Book of Magic. And now the reason this book is called The Coloring Book of Magic, as, as you might have guessed, is because it's filled with colorful pictures of magicians performing their magic tricks, just like right there on the cover. It's full of all these pictures of magicians doing tricks. But now, of course, you all know that a good magician can never reveal his secrets, right? So in order to protect my magic from people who might want to steal how the, how the tricks are done, I've cast a special spell on this book. I've made all of the pictures inside it invisible. Just like that, when I flip through, instead of seeing these colorful pictures, it's all blank, just like that. But now, what if I want to go and check out a trick in this book? If I want to learn something, or if another magician wants to read it, then in that case, all we have to do is give it a special tap with a magic wand, just like this. Watch this, ready? All right, and just like that, let's see what's happened. If we go through, it looks like the book is filled with pictures, just like that, it's filled with pictures. But wait a sec, this is this is the coloring book of magic. I, I said at the beginning that, that these pages would be filled with, with colorful pictures, but these are all black and white. I think we need to do a little bit more magic right here. Let's see, I'll take this little hanky I have right here, give it a shake, and just like that, magic wand, and now watch this, let's give it a tap. All right, let's take a look. If I go through, all of these pictures have been colored in just like that, and that is the coloring book of magic. Now, I've been doing magic for several years now, so I've moved beyond the tricks from the coloring book of magic, and I went to the sequel, a lesser known book called The Super Magic Book of Magician. And now, I've gotten so many of the tricks I do today straight out of this book, and I, and I mean that kind of literally. Uh, I'll, I'll give you an example. It's really hot today. It's like 90 degrees outside. Um, I'm feeling a little thirsty. I'm up here. I'm talking loudly. Um, how about a nice cool glass of milk? I have a, a picture right here of a glass of milk. Now it could be half full or half empty depending on your outlook. But I'm going to go ahead and set this picture right inside the front cover of this book. Just like this. Set it right in like that. Perfect. All right. Now we give it a second to think. Let's give it a tap with the wand. All right, and I'll see what happened. If I open up this book, I'll reach inside and pull out a full glass of milk, just like that. Very good.
Now, I wonder if any of you out there like math, because this first trick has a lot to do with math. Now, it's pretty simple. Don't get excited. Um, I have this board right here, and it has four dots on this side. We can count those dots, one, two, three, four. And on this side, it only has one dot. All right, now here comes the math. How many dots are on the other side of the board? There are six dots on this side of the board. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's all right, I'll give you a second chance. How many dots are on the other side of the board? There are actually three dots on this side of the board. I'll go through it slowly. I know this counting can be pretty hard. We've got four dots on this side, one dot on this side, six dots on this side, and three dots on this side. All right, now, now I can't see you, but I have a feeling that a couple of you maybe suspect how I do this trick, and that's all right. It's a pretty simple trick, and I'm actually, I'll, I'll show you how it's done so then you can perform it yourself at home. This actually is a trick board. There are only two dots on this side, and there are only five dots on this side. Five black dots painted on this side, two black dots painted on this side. So you see, when, when I cover up this spot like this, it looks like there's only four dots, right? And then I can cover this blank spot, and it looks like there could be six dots, and my hand is covering that spot. The same over here on this side, with only two dots. If I cover up this spot, it looks like just there's just one, right? And if I cover up this spot, it looks like there could be three dots. So you guys are all at home. You can take uh, a piece of paper, like a, a crayon or an Expo marker, and you can draw on five dots on one side, just like this, and two dots on the other side, just like that. And then you can go and you can perform this trick for your family and friends as well. But of course, I have to warn you, you gotta make sure you always keep your hand over this spot, right? Because if you take it off, what is your audience gonna see? Something you really don't want them to. You don't wanna ruin your trick. The same on this side. Now, now me and you, we know that there's really only two dots on this side, but if we say that there are three, and then we take off our hand, things might look a little suspicious. And soon, if we're not careful, we're gonna have dots all over our board and our trick is just gonna be ruined. One of my favorite kinds of magic is card magic. You guys probably like card games, I'm imagining, like playing with cards. A bunch of you probably have a deck of cards in your house right now. I love cards. I always carry around a pack in my pocket just like this. Right now, I'm a, I'm a sophomore in college, and wherever I go, I'm known for always having this pack of cards right in my pocket. So I thought I'd show you one of my favorite card tricks today, one that I can show you all the way across the camera just like this. All right. So we have our deck of cards right here, and as you know, there are 52 cards in a deck. All of them are different, as you can see, um, 52 different cards. Now I'm going to go through, I'm going to stop at a, at a random time. I promise that um, this is not pre-planned. I'm going to stop right there. That sounds mid, right in the middle. Um, let's take out this card we stopped at. I'll hold it up to the camera so you can see it. All right. I'm going to take this card, I'm going to stick it right back in the middle of the deck where it came from, okay? Just like that, drop it right back in the middle. All right, now watch this. That card's set in the middle of the deck. But if I snap my fingers, he rises up to the top of the deck, just like that. The four of hearts has risen to the top of the deck. Now I'll admit, I told you a little bit of a lie. This deck really isn't an ordinary deck of cards. It's actually an extraordinary deck of cards. And that's because there's one card in this deck that's a little ambitious. He's a little excited. And I bet that's the four of hearts. This card always has to be the center of attention. He always likes to be the card that's picked or the card that's on top or the card that you see. No matter what, he really likes to be the focus. All right, so let's see. Let's test this. Let's see if this is actually true. This four of hearts. Let's take him and let's put him back in the middle of the deck, just like that. All right, there we go. We cut the deck, and we can see that four of hearts right there in the middle of the deck. Let's push him in just like that. Perfect. All right, we've lost him. Three, two, and the top card. Again, that four of hearts, just like that. All right, let's give it another few cuts. Let's see Let's see if we can really, really trip him up now, all right? Cutting the deck, dun 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 all right, and let's try this now. Let's try. I'm going to stop at a random spot on the deck, and let's see. 
All right, that seems that's random. And this card that we stopped at, the Four of Hearts, yet again, just like that. Now, sometimes I'm doing this trick, and the, the Four of Hearts, he gets a little overexcited. He keeps getting picked. He keeps being the card on top. And then I go through the deck, I try to do another trick, and I see that every single card has transformed into the Four of Hearts, just like that. He's taking over every single card. But of course, all it takes is a good snap of my fingers and a magic word, abracadabra. And if I go through, every card is back to normal. So I've gotten a chance to show you a couple of my favorite magic tricks, <clears throat> but now I thought, why not teach you how to do a couple of magic tricks? Now we've all been at home for a long time now, not being able to see people, not being able to go places, and what better way to make this life a little bit more exciting than with a couple of magic tricks you can do yourself right there at home. So I have two of my favorite tricks that I'm gonna teach you right now. Now remember, a good magician never reveals his secrets, and that is really important. I'm teaching you this trick now, not just to reveal the method or how it works, but so that you can go and then perform it for your own friends and family. Teaching you not to know how it works, but how to perform it yourself. Magic is only exciting when you don't know how it works. That's what's fun about it. It's fun to see something that's truly impossible happen right in front of you. Now that's magic. When you know how the trick works, it's no fun anymore. Not for you, not for the magician, and not for anybody else who's watching. So I really hope that all of you watching this right now, after I teach you these tricks, you'll keep the secret to yourself and you won't show anybody how it works. All right, now it is time to recite the official magician's oath. I'm gonna say it up here. The words are gonna appear right down here. Please repeat along with me. All right, so raise your right hand in the air. I, Sam Dvorak, solemnly promise to never reveal the secret behind a magic trick. I promise to be a respectful member of the magical community and never heckle or reveal the secrets of others. All right, congratulations. You are all now officially magicians. Thank you very much and congratulations. Now there's a word in that oath that may have sounded a little unfamiliar to some of you. And that word was heckle. Now to heckle, what does heckling mean? Heckling means that if you're in the audience and you see how a magician is doing his trick, that you, you shout out, hey, I, I see how you're doing that. There's really a, an extra box or there's a mirror somewhere, something like that. You see, you see what he's doing and you call it out right in front of the audience. And now heckling is really rude and very, and very disrespectful too. And like I said, it takes the fun out of it. When you know how a trick works, it ruins it. It's no, it's no longer fun or exciting. So it's really important that you as new magicians, not only do you keep the secrets of your own tricks to yourself, if you see other magicians doing tricks and you know how they work, you keep that to yourself too. And you let everybody enjoy. It's all about being a respectful audience member. Now, for all I know, you guys have been heckling me this whole time because I can neither see nor hear you, but I really hope not. All right, now it's time to learn this first trick. And I'm gonna show you how it's done first, and then I'll reveal to you the secret. So all you will need for this is a little object, something small that you can hold in the palm of your hand. I'm using this red sponge ball right here. Magicians like to use sponge balls because they're awfully squishy, just like that. All right, I'm gonna take this sponge ball right here. I'm gonna hold it tight in this hand. And now watch this, three, two. It disappears, it flies through the air, through the air, and then we can pluck it out just like that. All right, now that is a very simple magic technique, a simple vanish and a simple reappear, just like that. Um, these tricks can be used in all different contexts too, in all different ways. You can make anything that fits into your palm totally disappear, just, just like that, just like magic. All right, now how does this trick work? It's actually pretty simple. There's only one or two main moves you need to learn. Now the first one, the most important one, and this is used all the time in magic, it's called the fake take. And the fake take, the name kind of hints. It means that you pretend to take something 
but you don't really. It's a fake take. And that is exactly what happens at the beginning of this trick. So you see me pass the object into this hand just like that, but really, I keep it in this hand the whole time. I never actually take it into this hand. All right, I'll do that again for you so you can see. I pretend to take the ball in this hand, but I really keep it in this hand. That way, you think my audience, they think I have the ball in this hand. And so when I open it up, it looks as if it's disappeared just like that. But really, it's over in this hand the whole time. All right, now let's break this move down a little bit more to make it a little easier. All right, so I want you to take your object in your hand and hold it in your right hand just like this. And I want you to set it into your palm just like that. Perfect, perfect. All right, now this move is called palming. And palming means you hold something in the palm of your hand without using your fingers. So you see this sponge ball is still in my hand, but I can move all of my fingers just like this. I have a lot of mobility. I can swing my arm all around like that, and the sponge ball stays right in there just like that. All right, so palming is the first step. You're gonna palm your object in your right hand. You're gonna squeeze it a little bit between your pinky and your thumb. You're gonna squeeze it in like that, so when you turn it over, it doesn't fall out, it stays right in there. All right, and once you have it in this palmed position, you're gonna move your right hand over your left hand, and you're gonna brush them really close together and make it look like your left hand is grabbing something. You're gonna close the fingers on your left hand right as your right hand moves over, still carrying the sponge ball. So in slow motion, it looks like this. Bring it in, pretend to grab, and let your right hand just go right down to your side and keep your left hand in a fist. Remember, you wanna pretend the whole time that you're actually holding your object here in your left hand, just like that, when it's actually disappeared. All right, so that is the first step to this trick. And now, how about the reappearing? So when I take the ball in the palm, I pretend to pass it over. Oops, that was pretty messy. I, there we go. I pretend to pass it over into this left hand. I hold my left hand out. I make my audience think it's in this hand. But really, I kept it in here the whole time. Now to make it reappear. So first, I make this disappear by opening my hand and I show that nothing is there. And then I look into the air and I make sure I keep the back of my hand facing my audience. I never want them to see that this ball is still there until the exact moment I make it reappear. I hold it like this, then I reach out. I pretend to see something in the air. Oh, there you can see it a little bit. See, that's not very good. You gotta make sure you keep it, hit it in your palm just like this. I reach out and then I roll it to the front of my fingertips. I just go whoop, just like that. And I do a quick motion to make it very sudden and make it look like it's actually appearing in a flash out of midair, just like that. All right, so in slow motion, that'll look like this. I have it in my palm like that. All right, and now I'm, I reach into the air like this and then I roll it to the front and I hold it at my fingertips, just like that. Like that, exactly. And then from the side, it looks even more magical because it's that sudden, that sudden flash, that sudden production. And by holding it away from your palm at the end of your fingertips, you show your audience and you trick them into thinking that it was never in your palm at all. They will associate the ball with being at the end of your fingertips, just like that. All right, so again, this whole trick from start to finish, palm the ball, bring it over your hand, pretend to take it, that fake take, hold it up, show that it's in your left hand, make it disappear, then reach into the air and produce it again. Now this next trick I'm gonna teach you, it's a little more challenging and that's because it's a card trick. All right, so if you have a deck of cards in your house and you wanna follow along, go ahead and grab that deck of cards and then join me right back here. All right, so I'll perform this trick for you first again. And this one's a little bit more interactive. You should do it with a volunteer. Now I'm really sorry that I can't do this with one of you, but instead, I found a volunteer who I will now make appear. All right, and now here she is, a volunteer has appeared just like magic. There was absolutely no video editing involved. All right, this is my sister right here. She handily lives in the same house as I do. All right, so thank you for joining us here. Thanks for I'm... having me. All right, now this trick right here, we have an ordinary deck of cards just like this. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna show the camera that every card is different just like that. 
All right, Sophie, will you go ahead? Here, we'll mix it up a little bit. We'll shuffle it just to make sure it's totally random, just like this. All right, now, Sophie, go ahead, and would you pick a card, any card you like? All right, good choice, good choice. Now, I want you to go ahead and show that card to the camera so everyone out there can see what it looks like. I will look. All right. All right, good. Can I open my eyes? Mm -hmm. All right, perfect. Would you go ahead, would you stick that card right in the middle of the deck for me? That's perfect, just like that. Thank you very much. All right. Now, here's what's going to happen. This might sound a little mysterious to you. I'm going to turn your card invisible. All right, ready? Three, two, one. Your card has just turned invisible. I'm going to reach into the deck and take out your invisible card. Was this your card? Was this the card? Yeah, that was it. All right, well, I have a feeling other people might not be as convinced. But to prove you that this is actually your inv invisible card right here, I'm going to flip it over so it's face up, and I'm going to stick it face up into the deck, just like that, all right? And now I'm going to snap my fingers and make it turn invisible again. All right, now let's take a look. If we go through this deck just like this, there's one card that's facing up, one card in there. The three of spades, was that your card? That was Go it. Go ahead, you can take it out, hold it up to the camera. The three of spades, your very card. All right. All right, so that's one of my favorite card tricks. I, call, I like to call it the invisible card trick, and I'll talk more about uh, turning the card invisible in a little bit. Um, it's a pretty simple method, actually, and I'm going to break it down for you right now. So there's no setup for this trick. All you need is a deck of cards. So I have my volunteer go through and they pick any card they want. They really can pick any card at all. Oh, uh, let's say they picked the 10 of clubs, all right? Um, they picked the 10 of clubs. And now when they're looking at that card and when they're showing the audience, that's when I do something a little sneaky. I take my deck of cards, the rest of the deck, and I flip the bottom card upside down, just like that. So now you can see every card is facing the right way except for the last card in the deck, which is now facing up, just like that. Um, from the other side, you can tell that it's the only card facing down. Every other card is facing up. So my deck looks like this. I'm holding it uh, here as my audience shows, and then I sneakily flip over that bottom card just like that. And then not only do I flip that bottom card over, then I flip the entire deck upside down. So that one card that's facing the wrong direction is now on top of the deck, just like that. So you can see every card is the wrong way. This card is facing down, just like that. Um, and now the reason this works is because when I hold the deck like this, or when I hold the deck like this, it looks exactly the same. Even though this way, every card is facing down, and this way, every card is facing up. All right, now here comes the secret. When my volunteer takes their card and decides to stick it back into the deck, they stick it in like this. And they think they're sticking it in normally. They think they're sticking in a face down card into a face down deck because they see this top card is face down. But really, they're sticking a face down card into a face up deck, just like that. So when this card goes down in like that, it is the one other card facing the wrong way. All right, and then I flip the deck of cards over again, and I go through, and of course, as they put it in, their card, their 10 of clubs, is the one card that's facing the right way, and that's how I can know their card without ever even seeing it. All right, so let's break this down a little bit again, and to its moves, just be very clear what happens here. All right, so step one, volunteer picks a card. Step two, you flip over the bottom card of the deck. Step three, you flip the whole deck over. Step four, they put their card back into the deck. Step five, you flip the deck over one more time. And then step six, you reveal that their card is face up. All right, so now if you want, you can scroll back in this video to where I performed that trick. You can watch it happens and see if you can spot the move. If hard, it's hard to see if you're not looking for it, um, but it's there. And you can follow along in the presentation and see exactly what I'm doing in that trick. All right, so there are two magic tricks that you can do at home with everyday objects. Something very small that you can fit into your palm, anything you can fit into your palm. 
and a simple deck of cards and a volunteer. So I hope you do take some time to, to practice these tricks, practice them on your family, and then you can perform them, impress people, wow them with your magical ability, but make sure you never tell anybody how these tricks work so you can all still have fun. There is one thing I wanna leave you with though, and it is actually the most important secret in all of magic. No, it's not in the, the methods that I taught you for those tricks. It's not a sleight of hand move or anything. It is though the greatest secret in all of magic. And it is this, it is that there is no such thing as a magician. There's only the actor playing the part of the magician. Presentation, how you perform the magic trick is the most important part. Uh, I love magic quotes and one of my favorite ones to share is, Anybody can do a cheap trick, but not anybody can do magic. Um, and that's very true. You can go through the moves, but if you don't make it feel like magic, if you don't have fun with it, then, it, then it's not exciting. And it's not, it's not something that people will be excited to watch. Um, you want to make sure it feels like magic. I'll give you an example. That trick that I, that I taught you at the beginning with, uh, with making the sponge ball disappear, here are two ways of doing it. Version one. and version two. All right, now here I have this red sponge ball right here. I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna hold it tight in this hand right here. All right, now focus on it very carefully. I'm gonna squeeze it super tight in three, two. Toss it up, it disappeared, but wait, where is it? Right there, out of thin air. Now those are two presentations of the exact same trick. And which one do you think was more exciting, version one or version two? I would say version two was a lot more exciting and a lot more fun to watch. And that's, I think, a perfect example of why the presentation in magic is so important. So make sure when you're working on your magical skills that you focus on the presentation. How are you going to share your magic? Magic is something fundamentally that we share with other people so we can bring the impossible into the real world. All right, thank you so much for joining me today. I really hope you enjoyed seeing some magic tricks, learning some magic tricks, and hearing a little bit about magic. Um, I had a great time putting this all together for you, and I really hope that next summer I'll be able to come back to your library in person so I can show you my full magic show, my full magic workshop. Um, I really look forward to seeing you again soon. If you, have, if you have any questions at all, if you've worked on these magic tricks and you wanna send them over to me for some feedback, or if you just want to chat about magic a little bit, um, I'd be happy to talk to you. Uh, my email is here at the bottom of the screen. Um, feel free to reach out anytime with any questions. All right, my name is Sam Sam the Magic Man. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your summer.